Officials have stated that this mine fire is no longer burning. But I'm here today to prove otherwise. This is in the former town of Laurel Run, Pennsylvania, where the fire still burns today beneath our feet. When it comes to mine fires, one of the most popular ones in the country, if not the world, is Centralia, Pennsylvania. But believe it or not, there's other mine fires in Pennsylvania, some of which are still burning today. Right now I'm coming to you from the former town known as Laurel Run, Pennsylvania. In this video, we're going to learn a little bit about the town, how the fire got started, and show you where the fire is still burning today. If you'd like to learn more and check it out with us, all you need to do is come along with me. So right now we see a grassy knoll area. But back in the day, this was a neighborhood. There was roads, buildings, homes, neighborhoods, all in this area and across the street. Looking at today though, you would never think a town existed here. So I do have some information here I wanna to read to you to kind of help bring up the speed and share some of the history as to what took place here. So the mine fire began in December of 1915 in what is known as the Red Ash Coal Mine. The miner accidentally left his carbide lamp hanging by a support timber which caught fire. Attempts to control and extinguish the fire lasted from 1915 to 1957. And 1957 is when the mine actually closed. But it recommenced in 1966 when it was discovered that the fire was still burning. In 1973, it was declared that the fire was put out. 850 residents were relocated in the mid-1960s. Every home and building, including a school, borough hall, church, and grocery store were all bulldozed. Boreholes were drilled and sand was pumped down and also giant, deep excavated areas were dug hundreds of feet deep in attempts of smothering the fire and cutting off its source of fuel. That's when they declare the fire is out, but as we'll see today, that's not the case. The fire still burns. I do have a couple of photos I do want to show you of the neighborhood, a uh, neighborhood street that I found, just showing you that it was like an active town. Road, homes, vehicles, and it was basically right where we're standing today, which is pretty, pretty hard to believe looking at it right now. But if you want to get a lot more information and to see some more photos of Laurel Run and learn about the mine fire, check the links I provided down below in the description. Right now, we're going to take a walk around and show you different parts of the area, including where the fire is still burning today and where there is mine vents still spewing out steam as we speak right now. So right now, we're going to make our way to one of the areas where the fire is still burning plumes of steam are still coming out, a lot of fissures in the ground. But as I'm making my way there, I want to take you guys back in time, so to speak, with some imagery. I'm going to show a segment which is going to show how the land looks today. And then we're going to cut back to the 1950s on the old map showing how the neighborhood and town of Laurel Run used to look with all the lined streets of homes, businesses, buildings. And we'll then jump ahead to more recent years and show how the land has been reclaimed by nature, starting off in the probably 90s time frame up until today. And then later on, we do have some other areas of interest I'm gonna show you 
including where a uh, structure of sorts back from the 1950s is still standing today and where one used to stand. And on top of that, there's other areas with steam coming out, including some ventilation pipes that were put in to monitor the uh, flow of gas to keep tabs on the underground fire. So once we arrive to our first section, we will pick up there.
So hopefully seeing those old aerial images and Google Maps images helps put things into perspective as to how the land used to look and how it looks today. Another thing I want to mention really quick too is that I'm obviously not the first one to come here. There's been numerous channels and people who have documented the Laurel Run mine fire. And it's up to you if you want to do your own research to see what else is out there. But funny enough, I've only learned about this in the last few years. This has been burning pretty much longer than the Centralia mine fire. That was the 50s, I believe, right? 62. 62. 62. This started in 1915. So this has been going on a lot longer, but not nearly as well known. Centralia basically is the the name that everyone thinks about when it comes to underground mine fires, especially in Pennsylvania. So this one's been burning for so long, but doesn't really have the notoriety behind it. And I didn't learn about it until the last probably three to five years, which is kind of bizarre. I, I figure I would have known about it, but it just never got mentioned. Wasn't really publicly put out there or no uh, major hype or movies made around it like there was with Centralia. The other thing too is that this town has a road going through, which I believe is Northampton Road. That's a road that is used for what is called the Giant's Despair Hill Climb. And that's where they race automobiles up the, the twisty, windy, hilly road. And that's been going on for a long time because there's actually an image I found where the race is taking place. It's a black and white image. Spectators are along the side of the road and the distance you can see the plumes of smoke coming out. So it's been around for a long time, still burning today. And although the town is gone, there is kind of a town reforming. I don't want to say that too loosely, but in the background here, there is Laurel Run Estates. And I believe it's a, a trailer park of sorts. And they are residing back there. I guess it's safe to put homes or structures there now. And that is the only residents living in the town of Laurel Run, as far as I know. Down below, where we pass through on the way here is the town called Georgetown. That is a town that was almost going to be erased as well. They thought the fire may go under there and cause more problems, and they were going to ex uh, not excavate, um, evacuate the town and demolish everything. But thankfully, with testing being done, they said, no, it's not a safety concern. Fire is not going that way. So Georgetown was spared. But Laurel Run, basically from the edge of Georgetown up to the water tank, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, is where the town resided. And now it's just basically nature reclaiming itself, except for the Laurel Run Estates, which is just up the road. Quick little finding and discovery that RJ just made is right here on the rock. Somebody etched it in. Looks like LJ or LT 6155. So it looks like 1955 someone was here and made their mark on the rock. Probably documenting, watching what we're doing right now. The steam vent. Now, I don't know this area that well. This is really my second time here ever. So I'm only showing you what I'm able to discover on the fly. That's the other small vent. But there's a huge area here where there could be more plumes of steam and smoke and more fissures, but I don't know the area that well. And we're losing daylight as we speak, so I don't want to venture too far off, but in the future I may return if I get some more knowledge or just kind of snoop around and see what else I do come across. But Winter time is the best time to come because that is when you see most of the steam, those cold winter days. And while we're here, I'll get another reading. This one's not that hot, but it feels nice though. It's in the 70s. But these are what are forming from underground. They're called fissures. And they eventually work their way down to the active mine fire. Oh, I can actually see steam over there rising. And there's a good shot from here from the main one. That's probably the biggest, most active one right here, at least. But I do see another one off in the distance, so we're going to try to get over there as well. So coming up next, we're going to head to a location we have to drive to, which is on the way to Laurel Run Estates, where they actually have a fenced-in little area with pipes coming out with active steam flowing out. I'm going to show you what they look like and we'll try to get some readings and see if there's any other areas nearby with some vents of steam coming out as well. They're walking our way over here and stumble upon this. Initially I thought it was maybe one of the boreholes and it is plugged up so you can't see down more than a few feet. But RJ, which knows more about it than I do, he thinks it may be a, where a fire hydrant would have been based uh on the what it looks like to me yeah, yeah based on the bolt pattern and stuff like that 
So it's either a fire hydrant or it's one of the boreholes they drilled down to monitor and try to extinguish the fire. But it's right here in the middle of nothing. But at some time years ago, something was here. Snakes. Why do it have to be snakes? So right here we have one of a few areas that are fenced in with these vent pipes. And I believe this one is no longer active. We're gonna double check, but when I scouted the area the first time, I didn't see anything coming out. There's no clear evidence of heat or steam. You usually you can see like a depression condensation that drips down but just one of the areas but there's another one just down the road which is active so for those of you who are currently watching i do have a question for you and i'm gonna be interested to see the feedback let me know have you ever heard about this particular mine fire the laurel run or red ash coal mine fire if you haven't tell me have you heard about the centralia mine fire I'm pretty sure that most of you are going to say you've heard of Centralia Mine Fire, but not this one. And that's the point I was trying to make before is that I'm from this area my whole life and only learned about it within the last few years. But Centralia, known about since the 80s. So, kind of bizarre. So if you look right side of the road and left side of the road, there are fenced in areas. Oh, it's actually open. It's open. There's one over here steaming out too. So right over here, this is one's not really fenced in. You could go up around it, but they are here. They're plugged up, but still steaming. I'm gonna scan that and see the temperature of the pipe at least. So it's in the 70s, around 80. That's just the pipe itself, 82 degrees, 84 degrees. So there is heat going through it and there's another one right here as well it could have been a vent pipe over there because it's the same diameter as the property. again 84 85 86 what about the pipe itself cooler 70s cooler. sorry where it's discharging it's the hottest but it's also at the surface so it's not as hot as it would be as underground but we're hitting we peaked out at 89 degrees over here is another fenced in area. I know it's here the first time this gate was closed, but it's actually open today. It's interesting. So here, as I was explaining before, there's a definite depression here or indentation that there's moisture and heat because there's nothing growing there. It's damp. And on top of that, you can actually see the steam coming out. So the ground is 78 degrees. Just for comparison over here, it's 36 degrees. So 40 degrees difference in this little area. I'll try to shoot up and see. I fogged up the camera. <laughs> I shot it up inside 89 degrees. So again, we're at the surface here. It's warm, but it's not anything over the top. Oh, there's actually more right here. There's more steam. And something covered in tarp right here, uh, trash bags with rocks on top of it. We may have to check and see what that is. So in case you're wondering what these pipes are for, actually they serve two reasons, two purposes. Number one is to keep the pressure relieved from underground. Without these, a lot more fissures would open up, a lot more cracks, crevices, 
plumes of steam coming off from other areas. So these help alleviate the pressure and steam. Secondly, they also are for monitoring. They could keep an eye on how much is coming out. You know, they could read the gases, stuff like that. So it's a dual purpose reason, but they are fenced in here. But as we saw, it's not locked up. But that black covered bag has me intrigued. I'm gonna see what that is because that is not normal to see that here. But there's also, we saw from a distance more plumes of steam somewhere in this area. I'm gonna to try to locate those as well. There's more steam coming out right here. And oh, I think this might be um, like for bow and arrow target box okay. there's styrofoam and hay on the inside of it I, see that I think that's what it is odd place for it it's deliberately placed there with the rocks on top hmm. and right there you can see the little steam there's some in the distance right there too oh, yeah. so let's go check that out next as we're making our way over if you look at the landscape here it's basically separated divided and filled with toys officially abandoned oh yes <laughs> look at all the toys they're like a toy store <laughs> We got little stuffed animals, makeup boxes. It? Oscar the Grouch's trash can. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, look at we're what? now officially back in time. We found dinosaurs. Huh. What is that? Is that a unicorn on the side of it too? Yeah. Oh, I see there's a license plate inside. Yeah. <laughs> now we're really getting back to fossil fuel, aren't we? Yeah. I like that he's wearing like a little scarf as well for those chilly mornings. Oh, I get it. Now. It goes like that. Hmm. It's definitely officially abandoned. Well, anyways, getting back to what I was saying is the landscape here, specifically right here, it's separated. There's a void here. And I believe that's formed from the heat and pressure over time. There might be an oil filter down there or something. Oh, there's a TV down there. You're saying this is a picture right here? I think so, an old one. And it looks like when it separated, this rock almost, you know, fell in. Because there's heat coming out here. This is a new formed fissure. Let's get some readings. That one goes down pretty deep. 88 degrees we topped out at. 90. So we're going to go back and redo that one that I said was like 200 and that's probably why it was coming up with an error. Yeah. Coming up with okay, so that's the one there I saw from the distance when we were at the main vent. And that one is pluming pretty good. Now it's probably hard to see with the sky in the background, but we're going to try to get closer to it. Taking the path of least resistance, even though it's not that easy. A lot of things I want to latch onto you and not let go. Boy, this is a hotbed over here. No pun intended. But there's steam coming up everywhere. Ooh. There it is, fissures everywhere. Right there right here and the main one right there it's like a boiling pot of water can't get in there it's super thick but look at that coming up wow it's like coming straight from the depths of hell well you know what we can't get in here past where i'm standing because of how thick it is but you know what can get in there the drone let's check out some aerial footage <laughs>
All right, now we have to have a long walk back and decide if we're either gonna take a trail to our next location or get in the vehicle and try to drive up to it. But basically we're gonna show you something that has been around since the town has been here. One of them's still here, one's gone. It'll make more sense once we get there. But I'll show you exactly in the old maps what we're talking about and show you what it looks like today. All right, so bonus find here on our way to our next destination. I mentioned that there was old roads and neighborhoods here. Well, we came upon one of the old roads. This is asphalt that we're walking on right now. And it just goes through the forest here. That's because the forest is now in place of the homes and businesses. But it's good to see that one of the existing roads that people traveled on to get to the various places is still here. There's an opening here in a, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a drainage. A, yeah, that's what it almost looks like. Yeah, like you see on the side of a road. Yeah. So we may come upon some other various finds on our way, but just wanted to share it with you because it is something from the past. These roads have not been driven on since the 60s for residential use. Now they're more or less just trails here. So it's hard to see now, but these are actually old home sites. And the way you can tell is because not only does the road keep going, I'm still walking on blacktop, but it's flat and then the next property goes up flat and keeps just following that particular order because these were all people's homes that were sitting on a level property, but they were situated on an embankment. But up here, is our next target so once i get a bit closer we're going to check that out and uh, learn more about it there's an old wall right here too like a property divide or something there's a stone wall right there all right Can you get off me so before us is a massive water tank and although alone by itself it's nothing really significant or important it kind of is because i'm going to show you back on one of the 1950s map images i'm going to zoom in and show you that this tank was here back at that time but there's not only one there's a second one directly across the road which is not here today this also signifies the end of the town. So going up this way, there's no more of anything. No more homes, no more businesses, nothing. The entire town ended here, went down that direction to kind of where we started. So this one's still standing. Not sure if it's the original or if it's been updated, replaced, but still here in the very exact location from back at that time. And now we're gonna cross the road and show you where the other one used to sit. Now there is something here which I can't confirm what it is exactly. It's a foundation or a base for something. You can see that it is made out of concrete and there's open areas to it. So it leads me to believe that something was standing on top of it. it may have been another type of water tank or tower, but that is not what I came to show you. It's actually this right here. This is the base, the foundation of the second water tank that was here back in the 1950s. For whatever reason, it was removed, but the foundation base of it is still here. And you can see a pipe there. It's concrete with a metal ring all around it. And basically one of those was sitting right here. And if we were looking in this day, We'd be looking down into the town with roads, homes, businesses, a lively neighborhood. Now it's just nature reclaiming. As I walked over here too, I noticed somebody placed on top of here some old 70s 
soda can or beer can tops. These are the old pull tabs. Probably from the 70s or 80s, if not earlier. But there's two of them here. Not so common today. So off camera, RJ and myself were talking about this particular area here. And this was in the back of my mind. I didn't say it out loud just because I thought I would have been incorrect. But now that he said it himself, it kind of confirms my thoughts. This is probably the location of an old wooden tank for water. Very similar you see along railroads when they have the filling stations, the water towers. But they'd have like a wooden tank sitting on top and it's open underneath, you know, to get access to the water. So this is probably the early original one that was here. And this one probably replaced it. And then at some point, that one was constructed and it's the one that's still standing today, even though that's been there since the 50s. But that's what our assumption is. We're probably close to it, if not on the dot with what we're uh, seeing here. As you can see, we're losing daylight. We got a nice backdrop of the former town behind us. Sun is going down. I just want to share a few thoughts with you. So first off, I'm glad I finally got to get here and to share it with you guys and to document it. Although this is not by any means my best exploration, my best documenting of something historical or significant. It's something I wanted to do sooner than later. I didn't want to keep putting it off. I knew about it for a few years now. He learned about it. Probably the same amount of time too, right? Yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah, there. more recent than later. And as I mentioned, this is not as well known, it's not as well talked about as other ones such as Centralia. But that we got to get here today though and see a lot of great things including the old roads, where the home sites would have been. More importantly, where the fire still burns today even though officials have deemed it that the fire is put out and extinguished. Their efforts were unsuccessful and today here at the end of 2022 the fire still burns. The only resemblance of a town that's here today is the Lower Run Estates, the trailer park, further in the back. Other than that, Georgetown is the next closest town, but the only thing that this area sees now is just the annual Giants of Spare Hill Climb race, which is on this very road right here. But since RJ came with me too, I want to hear his thoughts. Like he mentioned, I had actually just talked to him not too, pretty recently about uh, if he'd heard of it, if he'd been here, which he had heard of it, but he hadn't been here yet. So I thought it would be cool to come up here and experience it together for the first time. I know mm -hmm. Adam, our friend Adam Fresca, knows some stuff about it too that I'm sure he can pop in with the comments and, and add and correct mm -hmm. as we go, um, as the video goes on anyway. Um, and it's just more more of old Pennsylvania that, you know, you, you don't get to see, you don't know it's here, plus the fact that, like I mentioned before, with, with Centralia, Centralia was more in the media spotlight due to the residents, you know, having their issues with the um, poisonous gases entering their homes and fighting back and forth with the state with uh, not wanting to leave, some wanted to leave, some didn't, where this one was almost like it just quietly happened overnight. It was like they came in, evacuated the town, tore it all down, it was gone. It wasn't in the spotlight. There wasn't anybody fighting. They just, poof, gone. You know, it's funny now that you mention it. I'm thinking about it as you were speaking. Timelines kind of merge a little bit. Mm -hmm. So as I stated, 1915, the fire started by accident with the miner leaving his carbide lamp on the timber. The fire is burning up until and through the 60s. The 60s is when the town was evacuated and demolished. The 60s is when the fire started in Centralia. 62, yeah. yeah, so there was a merging point there where this town was being erased and that town fire in Centralia was just starting. So it's kind of funny that it overlaps there a little bit. But 
as he mentioned, that one was really in the spotlight. It was mainstream media. There was, you know, locals that were petitioning and fighting to keep their homes, and it was just a big spectacle, so to speak. We're here. It was just kind of said and done. There wasn't really much mention made of it. They just did it, and it was kind of forgotten about. But it's for people like us and others who have been here to kind of keep it alive. But I'm pretty happy overall with what we saw today. There was uh, plenty of riding that gear high. Oh, yeah. Plenty of plumes of smoke. We got some cool temperature readings. Cool is pun intended, because it was actually pretty hot. <laughs> and um, we got to see just a lot of things from the past. And just goes to show that Pennsylvania is full of history, especially coal mining history. We always see about coal mines, acid mine drainage, and today, mine fires beneath our feet. So hope you guys enjoyed our video and our take on this. If you have anything you want to include in the comment section, myself, RJ, and the others would be grateful to appreciate and learn anything else we can about this particular site. And I'm currently losing my voice. So I need to cut it up and wrap it up here. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Well, you know what? The kind of guy that RJ is, he knew I was in a dilemma, didn't have a vehicle. Well, he found me a suitable replacement. Hope you guys like it. Want to go for a ride? Come on. <laughs> Oh, my stick broke. Oh. That vehicle is not roadworthy. What the hell were you thinking? Look at this thing. It's I, worse than my car is. I, 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 I tried. You didn't tell me you had a 50 pound weight limit. <laughs> All I'm doing is throwing everything for you. I even cracked the frame. Ah. Uh, here I go again, back to no car.